Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look and see what the entire inertia tensor looks like. And here it is. We have nine elements. We have the diagonal elements and the off diagonal elements. And notice that these are the same, these are the same, and these are the same. So there's cross diagonal element symmetry there that we need to be aware of. And the diagonal elements, of course, come from the first portion of that angular momentum equation. So we have the IXX the IYY, and the IZZ. And what those elements represent? Those elements represent the moment of inertia when we're applying a torque in the X, in the Y, and in the Z direction that will then result in an angular acceleration around, along the, or around the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. That's of course providing that those diagonal element terms are not equal to zero. If they're not equal to zero, then there's a moment of inertia and then applying a torque in the correct direction will then cause an angular acceleration around the X, Y, and Z axis. The off diagonal elements represents the potential for an, ang for an angular acceleration along another axis not intended in a kind of in a way. For example, if we apply a torque in the x direction, then we expect an angular acceleration in the x direction. And then of course we use the IXX terms as this term right there. That's the moment of inertia of the object when a, when a torque is applied in the x direction causing an angular acceleration around the x-axis. But it could also potentially give you an angular acceleration around the y-axis and an angular acceleration around the z-axis depending upon the value of these off diagonal terms. If they're not equal to zero, then that torque in the x direction may also give you an angular acceleration in the y direction or around the y-axis and an angular acceleration around the z-axis. Here when we apply a torque in the y direction, we expect an angular acceleration around the y-axis, that's this diagonal term, but potentially could also cause an angular acceleration around the x-axis or around the z-axis if these off diagonal terms are not equal to zero. And if we apply a torque in the z-direction, we expect an angular acceleration around the z-axis, that's of course if this is not equal to zero, but it could potentially also give us an angular acceleration around the x-axis or around the y-axis if these off diagonal terms are not equal to zero. So that's the concept of the what we call the inertia tensor. And of course, that's why we need nine terms because applying torques in certain directions could result in all kinds of angular accelerations around the x, the y, the z-axis, depending upon the value of these nine elements that are representative of the inertia tensor. So now we're going to have to show you how to calculate the nine elements, how to get values for all nine elements, and then how that's applied in determining the angular acceleration around the x, the y, and the z-axis, depending upon what kind of torques are applied. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to calculate these elements and how to envision what they represent and then how to figure out the angular acceleration due to the applied torques. And that's how we use the inertia tensor. 